so you uh, you make your ways over to the uh, craps table. Um, there is a uh, just like a, a rather large crowd of aristocrats here, um, all basically on the same level as uh, Almacan is. Um, very very noble looking outfits and way too rich of tire uh, to to be compared to you, <laughs> lowly filth. So immediately as you start to uh, walk towards them. It's almost like they smell uh, third class on you, and they all turn. Their their guffawing stops. It's almost like a record scratches, and they all just kind of look at you and just go, "Are you lost?" <laughs> <laughs> oh no, sir! We're we're here to play big. Quite we're here to play real big, big and I'll I'll take the huge stack of my winnings from counting cards playing ba blackjack because <laughs> I just robbed the other dealer blind. <laughs> they all, they look, uh, the guy that said that, um, looks at the stack and he goes, Oh my, such big, such a big stack you have, sir. And then everybody around the table kind of laughs, uh, including Almakan. Um, and he, he kind of looks at the stack and he goes, Yeah, that'll be good for one round. Just to buy it. Well, it sounds great. Just need to work my way in, you know. It's not the first time my large stack has been complicated, uh, complimented. Uh <laughs> they, they all they all just kind of like turn to each other and raise their eyebrows and go let the man play and they make room on the set, uh, table for you so uh here's how this is gonna work um i want you to roll a luck roll but it has to be a hard pass the step two of this is to roll two sixes and see if you get a seven if you get a seven you lose but if you don't get a seven you win because Dems to craps. <laughs> Not a case of the crap, so I... I got a three and a three. Nice, that's a six. Uh, everybody at the table goes, ooh, uh, and they almost don't want you to be included in their class. Uh, <laughs> but you're starting the win. Um, I want you to roll spot hidden. Mm -mm. 27 out of 55, got it. Uh, something you'll notice is that, um, when everybody is kind of laughing, Almakan isn't verbalizing anything as he laughs. He just kind of, like, makes the motion of laughing, but he doesn't speak at all. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't go, ha ha ha, he just goes, like that, as everybody else laughs, which is something strange that you notice. Gotcha. And, uh, uh, William, your, your Zazarak has run dry. Well, time to get another. Re Rezazarak. 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 Cast Rezazarak. I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming I'm not with these guys, right? Because they went off to the high roller table? or am Yeah, I, you, am I... you were kind of off with Virginia and, and Charlotte, and then uh, they, they moved from Blackjack to that. So you're still kind of floating. There is a bar that sure. you can go to. Of course. I'll go up and I will order another drink. Uh, as you're ordering a drink at the bar, Ginny's sitting at the bar, uh, and he kind of, uh, turns in his seat to you, and he has a, uh, a, a gin in his hand, as his name implies. <laughs> um, and, uh, he turns to you and he goes, ah, the good doctor, it's good to see you again. Yes, I have not forgotten about, uh, our discussion of study habits and techniques. Oh, I wasn't here to accost you for that, although good on you for remembering, um... Uh, I was wondering how your trip is going. Oh, it's, uh, well, I would say that I was, uh, I was expecting something a little bit less, uh, exciting. Um, and I keep losing my accent. It's, it's wandering <laughs> all over the place. Uh, <laughs> it's the Zazarak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the real voice is coming out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, uh, last night I would say was, uh, was was quite interesting. I was I was speaking with what was her name again? Uh, Charlotte. The lady I was I was speaking with Charlotte earlier, and it sounds like um, you guys also doubt the uh, the story of what happened with Chad. Not not thinking that Virginia did it, but that uh, there is something uh, strange afoot. Uh, he kind of looks around for a moment. He goes, "Yeah, I would say so. I've seen many a strange things uh, in the pet in." recent memory and this is kind of ringing a little bit of a red bell in my mind i think these are um these are some signs that something is coming or something is going down um i wouldn't be surprised if this was more than what it seems 
Um, do you care to expound on that? I, I, I will admit I, I don't have a lot of practical world experience with the supernatural or the esoteric. Oh, I don't know about. <laughs> he kind of leans back a little bit and goes, "I don't know about supernatural. What would give you that impression?" And he he looks genuinely ten times more interested now. Let's just say that I saw something last night that I that I don't believe that science can explain. Hmm. Care to explain? Scientifically? <laughs> 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 no. Care um, care to divulge more information on that front? I uh I kind of look around and I say. Let's just say that I I wonder if the rumors of his name was Chad, right? Yeah, Chad. Uh, let's just say that I think perhaps the rumors of Chad's demise might be exaggerated. Oh, see, now that is what I was thinking, too. And he, he, he scoots his stool a little bit closer to you, um, and he goes, I mean, what would cause a man to just lay his clothes out and disappear out of a window? Those portholes are very small. I don't think that somebody could just easily slip through them naked or not. I think something different was going on there. Can I roll a psychology test on this guy to see, like, what his angle is on me? Sure. Make it. It's giving me vibes. <laughs> that is a 60 and a 0. That's exactly my number. Does that, does that work? Yeah, no, that, that, it ties are fine. Um, and, uh... uh <laughs> Basically, uh, you can just tell that he has a genuine interest in uh, the mystery that's going down. Um, and he sees that you are also as observant as he is for these details. He doesn't know mm. he doesn't know that you literally saw Chad Peterson. He just thinks that you both are on the same wavelength in, in terms of him not possibly being dead. Um, uh, he, he has a suspicion that uh, Chad Peterson is also still walking around on the boat somewhere. And he, like kind of perked up at that but he also mm. seems genuinely interested in in any time you say occult or supernatural so he gets mm. he, he kind of perks up at that too it's like the hyenas from the lion king Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> i'll say uh I'll, I'll lean in a little closer and i'll whisper like just so no one else can hear i'll say my compatriots and i saw chad peterson on the deck last night you did he kind of he looks across the room to Charlotte, who you know doesn't see him because it's on the opposite end of the room. But like, it's almost like he's signifying, like, "Oh, I have something I want to tell her later." Don't do not do not spread it yet. I don't want to cause a panic or anything. But we we chased him to the to the poop deck. I believe it's what it's called, and I saw him leap, and where his body should have struck the. The deck below, there was nothing. He disappeared. That is very interesting. Hmm. And we were fired upon by a hidden gunman. A hidden gunman, you say? There's more than we... one danger on this boat, is what you're talking about, then. We played it off as if we were playing uh, skeet. I mean, who would believe the, the drunken ramblings of a big game hunter and, uh, well, a, a shyster and a doctor? <laughs> Just Chris, just over in the corner. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, we have seven more days on this boat, and I intend to get to the bottom of this. Well, consider ourselves partners then, because if there's anything about our our group of friends, we also like to get to the bottom of mysteries. Um, and he nods, and he goes back to drinking. Um, and uh, and you see that he kind of like raises his eyebrows and goes back to drinking because somebody comes up behind you and puts a hand on your shoulder and kind of taps you. May I help you? <laughs> As I turn around. <laughs> it's Lay. Uh, and he sits down oh. next to you. Um, he, he orders a drink from the bar and he, uh, and then he kind of like sits down and he, he looks to you and he goes, I don't... I, I need to talk to you in private sometime. I, we can't talk here, but... I need to know what you learned from Dr. Song, and I maybe need to loop you in on what's going on with me and Reginald. Well, I would be happy to, uh, to level set, as I believe they call it. And he nods, and he, he just drinks, and he walks back off somewhere. And then with that, we're gonna cut back to Reginald and, uh, um, uh, Max. 
Uh, Reginald. Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, I want you to roll tracking really quick. Very well. Tracking. Yep, yep. 50 out of 70. Um, as you are standing there watching Max play with all these high rollers, something... You catch a familiar scent on the wind mm. or whatever, in the ventilation. <laughs> but, like, is something, something kind of, like, triggers you a little bit. Uh, and it's something you recognize. But you're not quite sure what yet. Mm. I will follow my nose. <laughs> uh, do you uh, do you just start going? Yeah. <laughs> do you just let Mac, leave Max to his devices? All right. Yeah. So, so he goes to leave and say, Oh, and Reggie, let me hold your wallet if you're going to go wander around. <laughs> oh, of course, yes. Just bring back, bring back your winnings, double it, the usual. <laughs> this is so <laughs> irresponsible. <laughs> but um, uh, okay. So you start, you start kind of wandering around. Um, uh, you get kind of closer to one of the doors. Uh, that's like near the bar. So William okay. kind of sees you as you get kind of in his peripheral vision. You see Lay walk away from William. Um, and, uh, uh, it gets, that's where it's starting to get smellier. Like, uh, you're starting mm. to catch it a little bit more. As you get closer and it starts to get stronger, the scent starts to make more sense. You remember what it was. Mm. And it's the scent you got from the blood from the deck. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It, it, how far away does it seem? Uh, it seems like it might go, there's a door that says staff only. <laughs> And it seems like it kind of goes into that direction. Well, I'll make... put out my hunting knife and I'll make my way. <laughs> Just smell the, the big casino fat floor. Deck blood. <laughs> oh, your hunting knife. <laughs> That's my hunting knife. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, and you're just going off alone. Yes. Alrighty. Um, uh, so you get closer to the door that says staff hidden. Um, okay. and then, uh, like, as you go to, uh, like, put your hand on it, um, mm -hmm. a, a, the steward from earlier slides in, and you put your hand on his chest, and he goes, May I help you, sir? Uh, yes, I smelled this, uh, this the unmistakable scent of deck blood. And, uh, my... <laughs> a big fat deck blood? <laughs> <laughs> unmistakable scent of deck blood. <laughs> Sir, um, is that a drink? Can I help you? Can I make it for you? Or what? what, it, what do, it says what on the door behind behind him? Staff only. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd really prefer to uh, take a look there. Is there anything I could do to wet your whistle, my friend? Wet my whistle? Nobody's asked. With me money. That. Or alcohol, I guess. <laughs> Sir, what is it that you want? He's just like, let's let's cut the shit. <laughs> what what is it you're trying to do? I crave adventure. Well, this nose of mine. It leads me beyond that door. That door is just down to the ship hand corridors. It's it's not for guests. I'm sorry, sir. But perhaps the adventure is down that for me. Perhaps that's what I made. The next great love of my life. I highly doubt it, sir, that nobody goes down there unless if they need to. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to... <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> oh, God, I'm here. Uh, Fire William, arms. Wi <laughs> Fire arms. <laughs> William, while that's all happening, I want you to roll spot hidden and see if you pick up on this little conversation. Ten and a four, that's a fourteen. I'm pretty sure that... Yeah, I had a 45. Yeah, spot. so you see Reginald, like, just kind of talking to the ship hand who's... Sto or the steward that's standing in front of a door. Oh, I'll, uh... No, I see the familiar face. I'll wander over, wander over to see what the commotion's about. Ah, oh, yes! How are you doing, <laughs> oh, big game the, hunter? Yes, the good William, uh, the good doctor here. I believe I smell blood. Uh, you should be familiar with the scent as well. It's coming from beyond this door. Do you not smell it? Did that make your pulse? Uh, okay. Do I do I smell blood? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll say, um, well, I I don't smell myself, but you know, I am not a tracker as yourself. Perhaps somebody is injured, and I'll like lift, I'll heft my leather bag, uh, kind of gesturing to the guy in front of us, and I'll say, uh, if he says there's blood behind that door, I believe him. 
Sir, let me ask my superiors and see if this is alright for you. Maybe I can accompany you down there. Hold on one moment. And he makes the fatal mistake of walking away from the door. <laughs> I will open the door! <laughs> <laughs> He turns around and you're both gone. Oh, mm -hmm. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, there's like a, a cl two clouds of dust shaped mm -hmm. like us. From where we <laughs> and then like, the door's <laughs> swinging. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. even one of the swinging doors. How does it do it? <laughs> Alrighty, so you make your way on uh, through uh, that doorway. Um and uh, as you get, it's it's very much set, um, kind of like what I said before when you got to the top parts of the deck. This isn't for customers, so they didn't make it pretty and they didn't make it practical. This is just, like, it's very facility-like. There's a large staircase that leads down, and you can see parts of, like, pipes and stuff that are all along the walls. Which way, Reginald? Let me follow my nose and I'll give it a sign. You definitely smell it a bit stronger now. Um, and it, it leads, so you go down these corridors, or down this, uh, kind of metal staircase, you can hear the tung, tung, as you step down and everything, um, and then you, you find, like, a split in the roads that it can kind of go, like, three different ways in front of you, mm -hmm. so roll tracking again. I'm gonna pull out the phlebotomizer while he does this. <laughs> nah, I didn't make it. I came close, but I didn't quite make it. Oh, uh, you didn't make it? Okay, no, so some luck. it seems like it's a lot of luck. Yeah, it could be coming from one of two different directions, but you don't know which one. Is there anything I could do to help with medicine? Like create like a like a like a litmus test that would like change color? I don't know. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, there's blood in the air. Like, there's there's blood in the air. It's not like necessarily the, It's not that I'm there's like, blood in the air. It's just that he's an expert tracker and he had like the scent from earlier and it's coming back. There's <laughs> blood in the air. Uh, I will take the leftmost path. We go left in the maze. It's an old adage. I will follow. You're both going in the same direction. I'm not. I'm not very brave. I'm not going on. <laughs> it starts to get a little bit darker as you're going through. Uh, as the steward said, nobody really goes down here unless if they have to. So you'll you notice that like when you're walking, there's like loud echoes, but there doesn't seem to be anybody else down here doing those kind of noises or anything. So it it you feel very alone, and it starts to get darker and darker as you're getting down here because the windows from above were all the way up there. And as you go deeper, it just gets darker. Um, do any of you have a light source on you? Uh, we didn't really do a bunch of gear. Not really. If we could say if, if one of you has like, like a, a lighter. Match. Yeah, a yeah, match like or a lighter, lighter yeah. or something. Yeah. We'll I'll save. reach into my bag and I'll pull out, uh, you know, something that I use for, I don't know, whatever. Sterilization. Yeah. yeah, sterilization. Yeah, you have like a, a, a mini sort of Bunsen burner thing you made. Uh, Perfect. For like, yeah, just in case you need it. Uh, you also use it for cauterizing wounds sometimes. But uh, yeah, so you, okay. it looks like a tiny gun with like kind of a lighter at the end of it. You got really lazy yeah. with this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks like, like a tiny gun with a lighter at the end of it. You mean like one of those normal ass lighters? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. No, no. You have to hold. You have to depress the button. To... <laughs> Oh, there, there we go. You got it's the it's the clicking really. It's, <laughs> so there, uh, there's. You can I call this of... the flame bottomizer. <laughs> <laughs> He's got one thing. <laughs> flame bottomizer. One one trick pony. <laughs> it's great. So uh, you're getting um, deeper in, uh, and then you hit a dead end. Yeah. Unfortunately, I want well... you both to hit and uh, roll uh, navigation. All right. Is that a thing in pulp? I know that's a thing in original. Cthulhu. It is. 37. Right. I made it. I have 57. Alrighty. So that... I mean, I have 57. 89. I failed it abysmally. <laughs> so, uh, Reginald, you see the dead end and you immediately start booking back to the direction you came from. But, uh, William, uh, you, you get perplexed by it. You think you're going to talk about the dead end for a little bit. And as you turn around, Reginald isn't there anymore and you're alone in the dark. <laughs> Well, luckily I have the flame bottomizer. 
<laughs> Reginald's just using his natural night vision. <laughs> <laughs> Must be all that panther milk. <laughs> <laughs> it does wonders. <laughs> I'm just gonna be like, Reginald! I'm gonna, I'm not yelling, I'm whispering. Reginald! Where the fuck did you go? Do I hear him? No, I'm gonna start <laughs> you're, you're, you're far too far away. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna backtrack. <laughs> if I can. Yeah, that's fine. I'm trying to find my way to that like three-way, that three-way intersection. Yeah. So, uh, Reginald, y you've made a bit of headway. Uh, you're running in the dark, and then all of a sudden you bump up against something, and you hear somebody fall down. Oh no. <laughs> uh. Oh, excuse me. I'll try to look who it is. Uh, as you as your eyes kind of adjust, it's the steward from before. Oh, sir. <laughs> he kind of <laughs> brushes himself off and stands back up. And turns on. He has a, a a lantern with him, and uh, he's holding it up. Um, and and now you can see a lot in the room and everything. And he goes, "Sir, I told you you had needed to wait for my permission to go down here, and unfortunately, the the captain said that no one was allowed down here without his permission." Um, and now that he's got, like, this big, bright light, you can see, because you're kind of back at that three-way split, you hmm. can see down one of the corridors that there's something laying on the ground. Oh, behind, look at that! Yeah, behind him. Oh, dang, look at that! I'm not so falling for blood. that one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> William, you see a bright light in the, in, in, like, as you're walking, you finally see a bright light, so you're able to kind of catch up. All right. I'm going to try to sneak up a little bit. So I'm trying to ascertain what's going on, so I'm moving quietly. Sir, sir, if you could come with me, I need to escort you out of this room. Oh, oh well, my hip dysplasia. I'll need my doctor friend. <laughs> I think he went down that hall, and I'll point to, like, a different hall. Wait right here, sir. I'll, I'll actually roll persuade. He's not falling for this shit immediately <laughs> oh, again. <wait> right here. <laughs> <laughs> gotta add, add a limp to it <laughs> I, I got it I got a 20 out of a 30 <laughs> wait right here sir I'll go fetch him Course. don't get oh, lost oh these the old dark. bones and I just start, as soon as he leaves I'll start running he starts I'm walking try, like, down I'm gonna the... try to catch up with the, yeah catch up with him like at the moment I see him go down the other corridor yeah, he, he starts walking down the corridor that none of you wanted to go down because you had no reason to but yeah that leaves you alone I'm gonna gonna catch up with the Reginald. And I'll, like, I, I'll, I'll see him, I'll wait, like, a little bit, and I'm running towards the whatever's on the floor. You're running towards it? Um, so... <laughs> just bugging it. Is on. Uh, as you get Puts closer... Puts his knife in his teeth. <laughs> as you get closer, you... even William, you can smell it. It smells like... It smells like blood. Like, really horrid blood. And, um, it's, it's getting stronger as you get closer, and you can kind of hear this gross noise that kind of sounds like skittering um, and just like this strange thing and uh, William your light goes out for a moment oh no not the flame bother my <laughs> <laughs> sir <laughs> 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 no. gas canister in it <laughs> butane do you refill it and light it up sure as the light, you, you go it to click like it. Takes like twenty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, my hands are shaking as I'm filling it. I just keep like a jug. <laughs> it's, it's all over you now. <laughs> and now you're playing with a lit torch. <laughs> uh oh, the end. steady. Well, he was a great now. character. <laughs> uh, you click, click, nothing. Click, click. Click, and then it, it it turns on, and what you see before you, like, because you guys got low to it, uh, what you see before you as the light turns on is a severed arm, and it's covered in these cockroaches and centipedes. Um, what you can see whenever the bugs give you a moment to kind of look at it is that it looks like an arm, and it's wearing a purple suit jacket, and there's a hole in the shoulder of it, and on the mm -hmm. wrist is a gold watch. Is someone's name embroidered on it? Why don't you find <laughs> out? <laughs> embroidered? <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> yeah, I'll uh, I'll I'll hold the the very stereotypical. I'm gonna hold the the kerchief to my mouth. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, really quick. Uh, I want you both to roll sanity. Sure. 
Maybe. So yeah, that's a 17. Uh, I rolled a 17 on the dice. So, uh, I Reginald, I want to say you get nothing. Like, there's no sanity damage for you. But William, because you weren't, like, you're not as, like, kind of seasoned in this campaign with this kind of stuff, I want to say you take one sanity damage. Um, so nothing major, because you've seen severed arms and stuff in your practices and everything before, but, like, you just weren't expecting one covered in bugs right here on the ship. Um, and, uh, so you said you were covering your nose with a handkerchief and going to try and get the watch? Yeah. Uh, as you touch the watch, uh, you feel a couple cockroaches skitter past your fingers, um, and as you go to lift it, the cockroaches immediately swarm the arm. Um, and they, you feel like the, the watch has like, it's almost like the watch for a second is hard to pull and suddenly then it is very easy to pull because as you pull it off, you've noticed that the cockroaches have eaten everything of the arm. Like there's no bones or anything left. It's almost like as you pulled it off, the cockroaches start to scatter and there's just nothing left of this arm except for that purple sleeve at this point. Not even the blood was left behind. Even the roaches managed to eat that up too. But yeah, you now yeah. have this gold pocket watch. Or, or not pocket watch, uh, wrist watch. Nice. How much damage did I take? Damage? Sanity damage? You took one. San yeah. Thank you. One. Um, I'll, I will just kind of shudder and be like, a normal rate of decomposition of insects like that shouldn't have been able to clear this of meat and bone for at least another day or so. Um... And I'm going to kind of hand the watch over to Reginald for him to take a look at. As you hand over the watch to Reginald, Reginald, you notice something. Uh, he doesn't necessarily notice it yet, but as he's holding it out to him, there's like a couple roaches skittering on William's arm. Ah, my dear boy, you've gotten a little dirty. And I'll kind of gesture to his arm. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna use the, the flay bottomizer. <laughs> 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 They, they, like, they kind of, like, try to attack the flame, uh, but then as you get it close to them, it burns them a little bit. They freak out and jump off of your arm. Strange. Unusually seen... aggressive roaches. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll look around really quickly as he, as he has the watch to see if there's any, like, on the ceiling above us or anything. <laughs> okay, so two things I want to happen. I want, uh... Uh, so, uh, roll spot hidden, but while you're doing that, Reginald, you look at the watch, um, yes. and you can kind of see in the light, um, uh, that, that, uh, uh, William's kind of using as he's kind of looking around the room. Uh, you can see in the light that underneath the, the watch part, um, engraved in it, engraved in it, engraved in it, <laughs> is, <laughs> is the name Bunny Bates. Hmm. Mm. I got a 43. My spot hidden is a 45, so I just, just eked it out. So as as Reginald is obsessed with the watch, you're looking around, and all of a sudden you notice, like, the walls and everything. So you're on, like, kind of the stretch of platform thing, and there's pipes mm -hmm. and stuff underneath you. There's pipes on the ceiling and stuff. At least there mm -hmm. would be if they weren't completely covered in roaches and centipedes. Like, the walls are, like, legit moving. You thought maybe it was the darkness for a bit, but now that you're kind of observing it and looking around, all those, like, really aggressive bugs are, like, seemingly all around you. R Reginald? Yes? I, I don't wish to alarm you, but we should probably get the fuck out of this hallway. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna gesture to the, the undulating wall of bugs. Do I see it as well? Uh, you do now, especially after he pointed it out. Well, the old dusty trail, we've we found our mark, and I'll just suddenly start backing up. <laughs> as you guys start to back up, you hear a loud hiss from a lot of the cockroaches, so it's almost like a chorus of screaming, hissing cockroaches kind of starts to catch up, and it, like, echoes through these metal hallways, <laughs> and it's uh, uh, they start to kind of jump onto the platform, like, slowly, so there's a whole bunch of bugs just kind of coming off of the walls and starting to rush towards you. I have an idea. <laughs> yes. yes, my boy. I'm gonna, as I like, as we back up, uh, I if the de uh, storyteller will allow me to do this, I'm gonna quickly pull a bag of isopropyl alcohol out of my uh, out of my bag sure. and just like kind of like douse uh, one of the what would you call that uh, gauze and then try to like you know make a 
Molotov cocktail essentially out of this isopropyl alcohol. I will allow it, but you're gonna have to roll for it to see if you do it because you're running while you're doing it. I think science um, medicinal would be a good one. Try rolling that one because you're kind of it, it's not necessarily medicinal, but you are using medicinal properties to make this thing. So sure, thirty-eight. Is that passed? And the, that that does pass. The numbers are seventy. Okay, so you're shaking and stuff, but you manage to get this little malt of cocktail made as you're running away from these guys. I'm gonna like just kind of like. The ones that are chasing us, I'm just going to throw it onto the ground and try to, like, you know, catch a bunch of them on fire. All right, so you throw it behind you, uh, and the, the roaches kind of seem to swarm it, because you can see the light from them. Uh, they start to swarm it. A couple of them just ignore it entirely, but then the thing kind of explodes, and you see, like, the whole hallway kind of lights up. Um, and, like, a bunch of roaches just kind of go flying and everything like that. Um, and then the ones that were following you decide to stop giving chase, and they go back. Um, uh, and they just kind of dissolve into the darkness as the explosion kind of goes away. And <laughs> as you do that, you turn around and you feel a bump again. And Is it the dude? It's the steward. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to stop turning off the lantern. <laughs> 